In this video, I'm going to be talking about predicting the properties and inter interactions of amino acid side chains. Because as we all know, the interactions in which these side chains participate is going to influence the final properties of the protein. So the first question that we're going to ask is, is the side chain nonpolar? Is it polar or is it charged? So I'm actually going to start over here with the charged amino acid side chain. And the first thing I want to point out is that this part of the amino acid is the part of the amino acid that every single one of these has in common. So when we're looking to predict the properties we're going to be looking at this side chain here. It's hanging off of the amino acid. And again, first charge. So how do I tell that it's charged? Well, I look right here and I see that there's an actual full charge as part of the side chain. And this side chain here got that charge because it lost a proton. So it's left with a negative charge. And a charged amino acid side chain will interact with another charged side chain with the opposite charge. I think I spelled that wrong. That's OK. And that kind of interaction will be an ionic interaction. In other words, it'll be a positive and negative attracting can also interact with a polar side chain. So the partial charge of the polar side chain can interact with the full charge of this side chain. It can also interact with water in the same way since water is a polar molecule. And so you'll often find these interacting within the polypeptide with side chains with the opposite charge, with polar side chains, or on the outside of the folded protein interacting with water, or with other charged or partially charged molecules. One type of side chain with which they won't interact is nonpolar. So they will not interact with nonpolar side chains. So moving on to polar side chains. So first question, how do I know that it's polar? Well, I can look right here and I can see this OH group. I can remind myself that oxygen has a much higher electronegativity than hydrogen. So the electrons in that bond are going to spend a lot more time near oxygen, giving it a partial negative charge and giving the hydrogen a partial positive charge. These side chains can interact with other polar side chains. Because the partial negative portions of those side chains can interact with the partial positive portions of this side chain, and vice versa. They can also interact with charged side chains, as we saw before. So the full charges on the charged side chains can interact with the partial charges on these polar side chains. And they can also interact, you guessed it, with water. Because once again, the partial positive portions of the water can interact with the partial negative portion of the side chain 
and the partial negative portion of water can interact with the partial positive portion of the side chain. And so water can surround it. So these side chains also tend to be found on the outside of a protein. They can also interact with other polar or charged molecules. But they too are not going to interact with the nonpolar side chains. Finally, moving on to the nonpolar side chains. So, same question as before how do we know that it's nonpolar? So, we can look and see here that this is made up entirely of CH bonds. I'll scoot that over a little bit. And remind ourselves that carbon and hydrogen have very similar electronegativities. So they're going to share their electrons fairly equally. So there will be no partial charges on this side chain. So there's nowhere for water. Over here, we saw that the side chain had a partial positive and a partial negative charge that water could buddy-buddy up to. So its little partial negative and its little partial positive portions could interact with that polar side chain. But over here, because we don't have any partial charges, we don't have anything with which water can interact. So these are not going to interact with these polar or charged side chains or with water. But what they will interact with is other nonpolar side chains. And because they can't interact with water, when we have a polypeptide with some of these nonpolar side chains in it, when that polypeptide folds up, they're going to tend to be in the middle of that folded protein, interacting with each other and not interacting with the surrounding water. So now some practice questions for you. So first, let's consider this amino acid. Serine. So go ahead and take a moment and look at it and say, is it nonpolar, polar, or charged? And why? So this side chain is polar, because looking right here, we see that it has that same OH group we saw before. So this bond right here is going to be a polar bond. So again, we're going to have those partial negative charge here and a partial positive charge here. So it can interact, once again, with polar side chains or molecules or charged side chains or molecules. And again, this polar includes water molecules. So it can be found on the outside of a protein. So next question here for you.
So let's look at isoleucine. So is it nonpolar, polar, or charged? So it's nonpolar because it's made up entirely of CH bonds. And once again, those bonds are going to share electrons equally. And so there will be no partial positive or negative charges. And it will interact with other nonpolar side chains. And it won't interact with polar or charged side chains. And will tend to be on the inside of a folded protein due to the hydrophobic interaction, so the avoidance of water. Let's look at another one here. So is this side chain nonpolar, polar, or charged? So if you notice this charge right here, you know that it's charged. So even though it has all of these CH bonds as well, because this one part of it is charged, this is a charged side chain. And so it's going to interact with charged side chains with the opposite charge. So in this case, negative side chains and polar side chains and water. Again, also other polar molecules and negatively charged molecules.